spilled between two canyons, the Japanese engineers couldn't believe it. The Chinese did it in just three years, however, after the bridge was completed. Although it won the Guinness Book of World Records, the outside world still doubted that the bridge would become a failed project like the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. So, what kind of bridge is this? The name of the bridge, the first Beipan River Bridge. It is a large bridge connecting Yunnan Province and Guizhou Province in China. The total length of the bridge is 1,342 meters, and the vertical height from the bridge deck to the ground is 566 meters, which is equivalent to the height of a 200 story building. After the completion of the bridge, the distance between the two provinces has been shortened from the past four hours to 50 minutes, which has provided great convenience to the residents of the two regions. At the same time, it also promoted the economic development of the two provinces when the mountains are shrouded in clouds and mist. They blend with the surrounding majestic mountains and beautiful scenery, and the bridge is looming in the clouds, becoming a heavenly road for people in the mountains to go out safely after the bridge was completed. It won the Nobel Prize of the 35th International Bridge Conference, the Gustavus Gold Medal. It was selected as the final list of 2022 China's top 100 buildings in the new era, and was awarded the title of world's tallest bridge. The bridge has gained a lot of honor for China, but at the same time, some people have raised doubts about the bridge, which was first built in 2013, when China announced the plan. American engineers believe that it is impossible for China to build the bridge because of the dangerous location of the bridge, and Japanese engineers believe that China will take at least five years to build. It is enough to see that Chinese engineers encountered many unimaginable difficulties in building the bridge. In fact, not all places in China have well-developed transportation, and there are still many backward places in China. Guizhou is one of the places with very steep terrain. The reason why China has spent huge human and financial resources is to rescue the residents of the southwest region from the closed and narrow valleys. With this lifeline, materials in the southwest can go out of the mountains and into thousands of households. But the terrain here is very steep and the geological conditions are very complicated. In places where bridges are built. Not only geological disasters often occur here, but also severe weather such as strong winds, heavy rain, dense fog, and freezing can be found everywhere. Therefore, it is a huge challenge for designers and engineers to build this bridge. The first one. The bridge is located between two canyons. The canyon is higher than 500 meters, and the complex terrain makes construction difficult. In addition, this is a mountainous area, and there was no large road leading to the outside world in the past. The complex terrain made the construction difficult. Some large bridge components cannot be transported in. In order to solve this problem, China spent a lot of money to build a road from the outside, which is mainly used to transport construction materials. Only when the transportation of construction materials is solved can we start to talk about how to build bridges. The second there are many karst cave areas in the high mountains of the two canyons. The bridge built in the karst cave area is tantamount to a tofu dregs project. In order to find out, the engineering team thoroughly investigated through drilling, geophysical prospecting, and CT scanning. According to the development of the karst cave, the construction of bridges began. The third, the next thing to consider is to ensure the stability of the bridge itself. In order to better withstand the test of the bad weather here, the bridge directly adopts a steel truss cable stayed structure. Its cable stays are arranged in a fan shaped double row and double lock surface. The safety and stability of the entire bridge is highly dependent on the stay cables. When it comes to steel cables, it reflects the extraordinary Chinese technology. Because the stay cables used in this bridge are only 15 millimeters in diameter and strong, it reached more than 1800 MPA, broke the international steel strength standard in one fell swoop, and set another world record. The fourth, in the face of extreme environmental problems, in order to ensure quality and save construction costs, China has developed a smart concrete that has high fluidity and anti-segregation and bleeding capabilities. This new type of concrete can be filled evenly and densely according to its own gravity, and because of the climate problem, it adopts the method of experiencing cloud computing, which can better ensure everyone's safety. In addition, engineers have installed a lot of sensors on the bridge. 
As long as the bridge fluctuates, the sensors will transmit various data on the bridge to the information cloud. The information cloud will conduct a comprehensive analysis of the situation of the bridge and then send the analysis report to the manager's mobile phone, and the engineer can realize the remote monitoring of the bridge. It is equivalent to installing an ECG monitoring system on the human body. The next step is to solve the problem of water access. Although there is a rough river at the foot of the mountain, water is scarce on the top of the mountain. In the end, we could only build a reservoir on the mountainside and use water pumps to transport the water to the top of the mountain, thus solving the water problem. The problem of power supply is the biggest problem. I want to use a transformer, but the rugged mountain road can't bear the transportation of large vehicles. In the end, it can only be transported by the most primitive manpower. After more than a month, more than 30 workers sent the transformer to the designated location bit by bit along the 40 centimeters mountain road with crowbars. Then it took another three months to have the electricity network needed for construction, and the actual construction has only just begun. During the construction, the construction party found that the bridge deck girder needs to be installed in sections, but each section weighs hundreds of tons, so each stage can only be disassembled and transported to the construction site bit by bit. After the workers assembled the small parts on the top of the cliff, they hoisted the construction. Although it was troublesome, the construction unit maintained the construction speed. In the end, it took China only three years to build the bridge. The completed bridge shocked Japanese engineers, who believed that if they built the bridge, it would take at least five years to complete. Guizhou and Yunnan are places with beautiful environments. If you want to build here, you have to pay great attention to environmental issues. Therefore, when building the bridge, the construction team also has the construction goals of low cost, low pollution, and low energy consumption. From design to operation, the concept of protecting the environment to the greatest extent is adhered to. The bridge is famous both at home and abroad for its relative height, exceeding the Sidder River Bridge and breaking the record for the world's tallest bridge. The total investment of the bridge is more than 160 million US dollars. Is it really worth paying so much money for such a bridge? Some outsiders even believe that the bridge will become a failed bridge like the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. Is this really the case? In fact, the opening of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is of great significance to the connection between Hong Kong and Macau in mainland China. It also revitalized the economies of the three regions. After the completion of the bridge, there were not many vehicles on the bridge because of the new crown epidemic. There is no way to make a profit for several years after its completion, which is why the outside world believes that the bridge failed. When the bridge was first opened, due to the steep terrain in the area, there were many clouds and fog all year round, and its practicality had not yet been demonstrated. But after several years of development, judging from the current development, the construction of this bridge is not useless. It is the real demand of urban development and provides more space for local development. Whether it is a bridge or a road, it promotes the convenient transportation of the local people and the connection between the local people and the outside world. The completion of the bridge ended the history of no highway access in this area and added a strong touch to China's national one belt, one road poverty alleviation policy, moreover. Allowing the villagers in the canyon to walk out of the mountains has promoted the smooth and efficient flow of people, goods, capital, and information between regions. These are enough to prove that the bridge is not a face project. Its completion has improved people's quality of life. Improved. What do you think about this? If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and comment. Thank you for watching.